Welcome to our service for this third Sunday of Lent. This service comes to you from Westfield Church. Please join in the words in bold. Loving God, we come to you in worship and thanksgiving. You are greater than we can understand. Open our eyes that we may see the wonderful truths you have shown to us in Jesus. You are more loving than our hearts can respond to. Help us to give ourselves to you in worship so that we learn what you want us to be. You are wiser than we can know. Still our minds as we worship you so that we can understand the things you are saying to us. Loving God, in Jesus you chose to come to the world in humility. You chose the path the world saw as foolish. You used what the world considered weak. We worship and adore you. Amen. Our first hymn is Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. God is love, and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, God our Father, we confess to you that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil for the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by God's Holy Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our second hymn is from the Iona community. Jesus Christ is waiting. Our third hymn is a new commandment. We say together the collect for the third Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading is Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, reading verses 18 to 25. Christ crucified is God's power and wisdom. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. The intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. 
Where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading is from John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. Jesus clears the temple courts. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves he said, Get out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, What sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The third Sunday of Lent marks a gear change in our Lenten journey. We begin today to focus directly on the goal of these holy days, the dying and rising of Jesus. So this morning's collect speaks of Jesus suffering pain before joy and crucifixion before entering into glory and asks that we too might walk in the way of the cross to find it none other than the way of life and peace. In our first reading, St Paul sets out the heart of the good news. We proclaim Christ crucified. Paul writes this letter to the people of Corinth at a time when many problems had arisen in the Corinthian church. Rather than skirt around the issues at play, Paul cuts to the chase and turns their attention back to Christ and what lies at the core of the Christian faith, the message of the cross. This text fits well with the season of Lent, where our eyes should be fixed on Jesus and looking to the cross of Good Friday. In Jesus, God gives us a sort of self-portrait. He pours into Jesus everything of himself that can be put in human form and then comes to live with us. In Jesus, we see the commandments brought to life and we see the love, compassion and mercy of God bringing forgiveness and healing to the bruised places of our hearts. In our Gospel reading, we see Jesus filled with anger, outraged at the unfair trading, extortion and exploitation going on in the temple, a place which for Jews was a sign of the presence of God, God's dwelling place among them. And we cheer Jesus on as he drives out the commercial traders and profit-seeking money changers. But the temple priests and religious leaders are in turn equally outraged and demand an explanation for Jesus' behaviour. 
How dare he? What gives him the right to overturn all the tables, causing chaos among both people and animals? The reply Jesus gives is unexpected and bewildering. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. It doesn't make sense. First he's protesting about the defilement of the temple and then he's talking about its destruction and about rebuilding it himself in three days. It would be impossible. It's 46 years since building work started on this temple. How could it possibly be rebuilt in three days? As so often happens, Jesus' words are completely misunderstood and later will be twisted to be used in evidence against him after his arrest. Jesus is actually talking about a more fundamental and transforming event than the physical demolition and reconstruction of the temple, the place where God and human beings meet to do business through rituals, offerings and sacrifices. Jesus is talking about moving the meeting place of God and human beings away from a building. His own body, his own being will be the new temple, the place where the holiness of God dwells. All the things that Jews were meant to find in the temple, life, love, healing and forgiveness, from now on will flow through Jesus, through his broken and risen body, and they will flow for all people not just the people of Israel. In Jesus, we are to find a new sanctuary, which is a place of meeting with God, a place where God is present to us and we are present to and for him and each other, a place of relationship and community. Each one of us and all of us together as a fellowship are called to be the home, the dwelling place of God. Jesus says that if we keep and love his words, he and the Father will come and dwell in us. There is a sacred space within each of us where love can dwell and flow from us, a place of peace and light, the place where God is. We are called to live our lives from that sacred space of God and to love and respect the sacred space of God in others. Lent is perhaps a good time to visit our inner holy place more often and spend more time there listening for God's voice. A time of grief and mourning often causes us to think deeply about our lives. It can be a time when we think about what's really important and what's just cluttering our lives up with distractions and stuff we don't need or want anymore. And during this Lent, and this pandemic time of mourning, we can also see, hear and smell the promises of spring around us. New life, new hope and resurrection. Easter day will dawn once more, and it always will. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you invite us to follow in your footsteps. Help us to share your outrage at injustice in the world. Give us the courage to speak out and take action when we see people being exploited. Amen. A fourth hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Go back to the website to find Dawn's Intercessions and the Lord's Prayer to watch and listen to. Our final hymn is At the Name of Jesus. We say together our closing prayer. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those you love 
and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.